The focus of this video is inequalities, and we'll start with linear inequalities. We'll then look at the notation associated with inequalities. And finally, we'll look at how to solve quadratic inequalities. And the first example is a linear inequality. And you would solve this in exactly the same way that you would solve a linear equation. Um, but rather than getting a particular answer, you're going to get a solution set. And that means you're going to get a range of values for x which satisfy the inequality. So if we work through the solution for this inequality, expanding the left hand side of the inequality first. And then rearranging. going to give us 3x <clears throat> is less than 7 and so x must be less than 7 over 3. Now we can write the solution set in three different ways and um, we can use inequality notation like this um, we can use what we call set notation If we write this in net set notation, we need curly brackets, and we're going to say that the solution set are values of x such that x is less than 7 over 3. And the other way of expressing a solution set is to, is to use something called interval notation. And for that we use uh, standard or square brackets. Um, in this case, um, the solution set is all values of x being less than 7 over 3. And in interval notation that would look like this. So we're going to use a standard bracket. And we're going to say that x can take all values in the interval from negative infinity up to, but not including, 7 over 3. So before we move on, we should look at the different notation uh, that we can use for solution sets when we are solving inequalities. Um, so the three different um, types of notation are inequality notation, set notation and interval notation. And there are some examples at the top of this page. Um, a few important notes to consider. Um, in the interval notation, if we use a square bracket, so like on the top right example there, that would mean that the 7 is included in the interval, whereas a standard bracket um, tells us that that particular value is not included. So for the first example in that table, um, x is greater than or equal to 7. So when we use interval notation, um, we use a square bracket for the left hand end, end of the interval there to show that we're including 7 in the interval. And we use a standard bracket for the right hand end of the interval because um, infinity is not a specific value. Um, and so the notation for x is greater than or equal to 7 is square bracket 7. And then we use an infinity symbol with a standard bracket um, at the side of that. Um, a couple of other important points here is that we use um, set notation, um, which is described in the box in the in the centre. Um, the the symbol that looks a little bit like an N is shorthand for and. So in the second example, where we want to include values of x which are greater than or equal to one and also less than seven. When we write that in set notation, we use curly brackets to say x such that x is greater than or equal to 1 and x such that x is less than 7. And then in interval notation, 
and we're wanting to include the one but not the seven so it's a square bracket one comma and then seven with a standard bracket for the third example in a table um, at the top um, to describe values of x that are less than negative two or greater than one using set notation we use the union symbol there for to refer to or so in the in the set notation we've got x such that x is less than negative two or x such that x is greater than one and then when we write that in uh, interval notation um, we've got values from a negative negative infinity up to but not including negative two or values from one but not including one up to um, positive infinity and the fourth example um, in the inequality there states that we want values that of x that are less than two and x greater than four and we can't have any values that are less than two and also greater than four and so there are there's no valid interval for that and in set notation we use a symbol which looks a little bit like a, an, an O with a line through it which refers to the empty set meaning there's no valid values for that set so just to reinforce that if we uh, use a table at the bottom of the uh, page here and we've got three examples of inequalities if we write those using set notation and interval notation so for the first one we've got x is greater than 7 so in set notation we use curly brackets and we are saying that we've got values of x such that x is greater than 7 and in interval notation um, we are not including 7 but we are including all values above that so that's what it looks like in interval notation for um, the next example we've got values of x which are greater than 5 and less than 7 so in set notation x is a value such that x is um, greater than 5 and values of x such that x is less than 7 in interval notation we can write it using standard brackets because we're not including the 5 and the 7 in the interval but we want all values between and for the final example we've got um, a solution set of values which are x greater than 5 or x is less than or equal to 0 so in set notation using curly brackets x such that x is greater than 5 or x such that x is less than or equal to 0 and in um, interval notation we've got values from negative infinity up to and including 0 so we need a square bracket there or values from 5 up to positive infinity so here's a table where we've got three different um, types of notation for referring to solution sets parts of the table are completed already your job is to complete the um, gaps in the table um, by filling in either the inequality notation set notation or interval notation so if you pause the video and have a go at that and then when you're ready continue with the video to see the solutions and check your understanding so here's a solution to the first half of the table and here's the solutions to the second half of the table if we just pay particular attention to the last two examples there where we've been given um, a solution set in set notation um, the first of those two examples has values of x 
such that x is between 0 and 10 and values of x such that x is greater than or equal to 8. So that means that if a value of x is in the interval 0 to 10 and also in the interval um, x is greater than or equal to 8, then it must be between 8 and 10, including 8 but not including 10. And the final example we can think of in a similar way, we want all the values of x such that x is between 1 and 4 and it's also greater than or equal to 3. So therefore we're wanting values of x that are um, greater than or equal to 3 but less than 4. So if we move on now to look at quadratic inequalities, um, the general method for for solving a quadratic inequality is detailed on the right hand side of this page and what we do first is we aim to solve the quadratic as if it was an equation in this case we can factorize um, however not all quadratic um, functions will factorize it doesn't mean to say that they can't be solved it just means that we may have to use the quadratic formula however this one does factorize so we can use that method to get what we call the critical values so for this inequality we get x take away 7 x plus 1 and that gives us critical values of x equals 7 and x equals negative 1 uh, for the purposes of solving the quadratic inequality, we should draw a, a sketch that identifies um, those critical values. So x is 7, x is negative 1. And this quadratic function has a positive coefficient of x squared. And so the graph of the function will look like that. And we can now use the graph to identify the solution set to the inequality. Um, we want the quadratic function to be greater than zero. So that's identified on the parts of the graph that are above the x-axis because we're wanting the value of the function to be greater than zero. Um, and so therefore we can see that the solution set is x is less than negative 1 or x is greater than 7. Um, or we could write that in set notation as x such that x is less than negative 1 in curly brackets or x such that x is greater than 7. So just to um, summarise, when we're solving a quadratic inequality, we find the critical values by solving the quadratic equation. In this case, we've used factorisation for that, but when, the, when we can't factorise the um, function, we could use the quadratic formula. So that's perfectly fine to do that. And you get the critical values. That allows you to do a sketch of the graph and the important points here are only the, the, the roots of the equation because we just want to identify the parts of the graph that are above or below the x-axis. In this case we wanted the parts of the graph that were above the x-axis because the inequality was x squared minus 6x minus 7 is greater than 0. And then once we've identified the regions we can write the solution set using um, either inequality notation, set notation, or if required, we could also write that in interval notation. And to reinforce that just a little bit further, so if the, the type of the inequality is one where the inequality is such that is greater than or greater than or equal to, then we are interested in the parts of the graph which are above the x-axis, and that's going to produce, when it's a when it's a positive um, quadratic equation, that's going to produce two separate parts of the graph. And so um, we'll end up with two separate inequalities um, as a solution set. 
um, and for the type of inequality where it's less than or equal to or less than then we are interested in the parts of the graph which are below the x-axis and that's going to give us one part of the graph between two values uh, and so we end up with one inequality between those two values so let's look at this example next, which requires us to rearrange the inequality so that we can get it into a form where we can find the critical values. Uh, and so if we rearrange this one, um, we could say 4 plus 3x take away 2x squared is greater than negative 4x. And then 4 plus 7x take away 2x squared is greater than zero. Now you probably won't like the negative x squared coefficient here so there's two ways of dealing with that. Um, we could either rearrange the inequality so that all the terms are on the right hand side. If we do that then that's gonna lead us to zero is greater than 2x squared minus 7x minus 4. Or the other way to uh, consider this is we could multiply the um, terms in the inequality by negative 1. But one important thing to note is, is that if we multiply or divide the terms in inequality by a negative number, then that's going to switch round the inequality sign. So if we did that, we'd have, we could do it and say negative 4 take away 7x plus 2x squared but then that switches the inequality sign round, makes that less than zero. And then just writing that with the x squared term at the beginning and the constant term at the end gives us the inequality in that form. Now, both of those two inequalities are the same. It's just two different ways of uh, dealing with the negative x squared coefficient. So we can now proceed to get the critical values and this one factorizes and we get 2x plus 1 x subtract 4 giving us the critical values of x equals negative a half x equals 4 so we can do a sketch graph now and to identify the solution set. So negative a half of four are the roots or the critical values. And we can sketch the inequality. In this case, we are looking for um, two x squared minus seven x minus four to be less than zero. And so we're interested in the part of the graph which is below the x axis. And in inequality notation, that's going to give us a solution set where x is between negative a half and 4. And this time I'll give the solution set in um, interval notation as well. So we could write negative a half 4 like that. So here's some questions to try. Um, all these are quadratic inequalities. So you'll need for each one, you'll need to find the critical values, do a sketch graph to identify the solution set on the graph, and then write out the um, solution set in either inequality notation, set notation, or interval notation. So if you pause the video at this point, and then when you're ready, um, continue the video to see the solutions. So here's the solutions to the first um, section of those questions. Um, all the solutions have been stated using inequality notation. And here are the solutions to the remaining questions.